Yes, hello, my beautiful people, Jamaica and youth in the building yet again. And yes, as you can see in the thumbnail, as you can see on the, the, the screen, we're going to be discussing the FIFA ranking and the difference with the FIFA ranking and the CONCACAF index ranking that um, we see uh, that has just been released um, you know, last week, I think last week was the CONCACAF index ranking, and this week is the the um the FIFA ranking. And then we want to also discuss the USA being seen as number one in CONCACAF. Is the US genuinely um number one in, in CONCACAF? And we also want to discuss the busy the busy summer ahead for the reggae boys. So we want to do that. I mean, <laughs> we don't really have anybody in the building yet. So we want to give people some time to come in. Um, we did set up this stream um, earlier today, and I don't know if, you know, people were able to see it. But if they weren't, um, I think now they're able to see it. And we're going to be going live we are live right now at least and i'm just kind of checking to see if we have any um if i can see this live right now on my on my stream Ooh, i'm not seeing it but i want to see if it's coming going live on Let's see, you are live, you are on YouTube. Let's see, I just want to move. All right, yes, so just want to make sure. All right, so it seemed like everything all is jolly and well. So yes, as I said, we wanted to discuss um, the FIFA ranking um, and the difference that it has from CONCACAF, you know, and, 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 you know, some other topics that we're going to be tackling as the, 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 the time goes along. But so the FIFA ranking as, as, you know, and, and before I get started, I just want to ask everybody, as you come in, just hit the, the smash the like button, you know, I want to get more eyes on the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button um we're trying to grow the channel and you know your subscription definitely helps i see a comment already oh we're ah, awesome 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 so i can see the comments um no and that means that we we are we are live awesome all right so as i said i wanted to talk about the fifa ranking now recently the FIFA rankings came out. We saw the 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 um the Concacaf index, and Jamaica moved up from sixth position in Concacaf to now fifth position in Concacaf. They are they are they are they are position number five in Concacaf, and the, the the way how that played out, if 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 I can look at it, is that Mexico is number one, United States is number two. Panama is number three, Canada at number four, Jamaica number five, and Costa Rica at number six. So that's a pretty interesting um, set, of, set of rankings right there because um, on the FIFA rankings, there are some differences there. And so if I go to the FIFA rankings, uh, which is right here, I see the U.S. has actually now moved up to... Um, number 11 in the world. They have moved, I think they moved up two places. So they, they must have been 13 or something like that. They have now moved up to, to 11, um, 11th in the world. Um, Mexico, who was 15th the last time around, seems to be now uh, number 14 in the world. So we can see USA still, by FIFA rankings, they are ranked number one. Um, whereas by CONCACAF rankings, the Mexico is ranked number one. So USA is 11, Mexico is, is, is ranked number 14 in FIFA, 
Um, and if you, you if you go through the rankings, I think the next biggest ranked team is Panama at number 45. So they are third in CONCACAF by FIFA rankings, and they move down from 44 down to 45. Then, then Canada is number four in CONCACAF. They are 49 um, in CONCACAF. And then Costa Rica is 52 in, in CONCACAF. And Jamaica, sorry, Costa Rica is, yes, Costa Rica is 52. They moved up two places. They moved up from 54 to 52. And then Jamaica is number 55. They moved up from 57. Um, and now they're at 55. And that's kind of a movement that they were, they, they were 57, uh, I think, two months ago. They, or, or they were 55 two months ago. Then the next FIFA ranking, they dropped to 57. And now this FIFA ranking, they're back up to 50. Um, 55. So my 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 question is, and, and what I kind of want to look at is why is it that um CONCACAF's ranking index is different from um con uh from FIFA? Because in FIFA, Jamaica is ranked higher than Costa Rica, but in CONCACAF, um in CONCACAF, uh Jamaica. So Jamaica is ranked higher than, than, than Costa Rica in FIFA, but in CONCACAF, uh, what am I saying? I don't think I got that right. In, in, in CONCACAF, Jamaica is ranked higher than Costa Rica, but in FIFA, Costa Rica is ranked higher than Jamaica. And my question is, why is it, why is it like that? Why is it that the, 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 the ranking index in CONCACAF is different from the 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 um the, the the ranking in FIFA. Um, I was thinking about it because you know one would think, no, you you, you can't imagine. Maybe FIFA has a longer history of games played um, by 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 the national teams than 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 the Concacaf index would have had. Concacaf index, I don't know how long they're taking um in into account. I don't know if they're taking from the 1990s, um, for example, into account when the, the CONCACAF index is being done, or if they, you know, they're just taking into con consideration the recent games that 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 has been out there. So, I mean, it's 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 something that, you know, as perturbed me, I I, I, I kind of wanted to see what people thought about that. Why were why are the rankings any different? Um, Personally, I really do believe that Jamaica is number five in CONCACAF because, you know, if you really look at the performances recently, I said that Jamaica at, at, at a minimum is 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 five. At worst, Jamaica is five um, in CONCACAF. Um, if you ask most people, they would probably say that the U.S. is number one in CONCACAF and then Mexico is two. But CONCACAF has Mexico as one. And the U.S. has two, and then they have you know um, Panama no as as three, Co uh, Canada as four, um, Jamaica is at five, and Costa Rica at six. Um, I I think that that's about right in terms of the rankings. In terms of the the, the top two, though, I mean I don't know how many people would necessarily agree that. Uh, um, the that, that Mexico is number one. I think even you know even Mexico, you know Mexican Mexican fans would probably agree that there is there are more than you know the, the Mexican fans would agree that US is probably number one. They will say that. Now I have kind of a slightly different take on that that I'm going to talk about in a minute because and that's why in the thumbnail it has you know is USA genuinely number one in Concacaf. And there's a reason for me asking that. But, you know, um, why the difference in the ranking? What are some of the, the, the reasons that CONCACAF takes into consideration that's different from what FIFA takes into consideration? Why is it that Mexico is, is, is one in CONCACAF, but they are number two in CONCACAF by FIFA standards? Why is it that Jamaica is sixth by FIFA standards, but fifth? by CONCACAF standards. What is the difference in what 
causes that? I mean, do they have a different metric by which they uh, they 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 organize the scores? Um, maybe it is that FIFA looks at you know the head-to-head -head clashes a little bit more when they're trying to tell what team is better than what. I don't see why Costa Rica should be um, as high as they are in the rankings because honestly, they really haven't done you know um, the best. They haven't been the 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 the, the best um, recently. I think their qualifications for the recent World Cup probably um, give them has given them a lot of marks. I've uh, given them a lot of um, you know goodwill with the, the, the with FIFA, and so FIFA has you know um, given them you know a, a, a higher ranking than they, they they really deserve to be, in my opinion. Um, but in terms of US and Mexico, um, they might actually be right. Concacaf, the Concacaf ranking, they might actually be right about putting Mexico as number one, even though I don't think a lot of people would agree with that. I don't think a lot of people believe that Mexico is number one, even though Concacaf has that. But they might be onto something, and I'm going to come to that in a second. But what say you? I mean, why why is it that um, the, the the rankings are different, and should Concacaf align their rankings with FIFA? Is that something that they should do, or the way that they're doing it now is the way that they should continue doing it? Meaning that you know they have a different ranking system than FIFA, and because of their difference in ranking system, you know, you're going to see differences between CONCACAF and and um, and FIFA. You know, I, I do believe that um, there is some merit to both because I see things in both different rankings that 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 you know I believe about this ranking, but I don't believe about CONCACAF. You know, and 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 that is kind of some of the things that you know is is it 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 perturbs me a little bit because it makes me wonder what is it that um they use to determine the rankings i know it depends on you know what team you play what competition you're pl you're playing um you know the weight of the game that you're playing so for example if you're playing a world cup qualifying campaign in a world cup qualifying campaign and you beat a top 3 team that might garner you more points than if you beat one of the top three teams in a friendly international, for example. Or even if you're playing a World Cup qualifying team, but you're, you have beaten a team that is ranked significantly below you, then you might not get a lot of points for that because that is not, you know, you're expected to beat that team. So you by you beating that team, you haven't really done yourself any major favors in terms of bringing up um, your ranking. Um, so, for example, upcoming right now is the the um, the World Cup qualifying campaigns in June. Now, Jamaica, I think we're going to be playing Dominican Republic and Dom Rep in our first round of games this year in June. And I think next year we're going to play, um, you know, Guatemala and then Dominica again, you know. No, the dumb rep game, the dumb rep and the, the, the Dominica game, those two games probably might not get us um, a lot of points in terms of FIFA ranking, but we can lose a lot of points if we don't win those games. So it's very important that we win those games. It's very important that we take those games and, and, and win them, even though chances are winning those games might not move us in the ranking. It might might not even move us in the in the in the uh, the Concacaf index ranking. But if, for example, we do well in the Copa America, you know, Copa America is coming up. You have um, Mexico. That's a very good game for us to take because Mexico is ranked number one in Concacaf. So you can imagine if we if we win that game, you know, that would that would push our ranking up. And the thing is. For me, I want to see the rankings go up. I want to see us up in the ranking, especially the FIFA ranking. In some ways, the FIFA ranking is a little... Well, both rankings are important, to be honest. But the FIFA rankings, from a developmental perspective, is a little bit more important than the CONCACAF rankings. Because with FIFA, you know, 
if you're up, if you're 50 and above, the, the, the British market has opened up. The, 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 the market in England has opened up because no, you know, um, players can be transferred overseas. No, in other parts of Europe, you know, the market is already open, but it doesn't seem like our players go to the, 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 the well, we see some players in Belgium, but not so much in the, like the Netherlands or, or in France or, um, you know, in, in, uh, in Germany. You know, we don't see a lot of our players in those larger European markets. We tend to only look at um, England and say, man, if we get top 50, we can go to England. And, and the truth of the matter is that, that England has a lot more scope because you're talking about um, Premier League, you're talking about English Championship, and you're talking about League Two. And all of those leagues are strong leagues. So if you're a player in Jamaica and you get to go to any of those leagues, you're you're in good shape. You know what I mean? So um there is that. But the, the, the in, in, in Copa America, with us playing Copa America, Mexico, that game would be a good game to win. We have Ecuador, that game would be also a good game to win. And we have Venezuela. All of those teams are ranked above Jamaica. You know, so any if we get to win any of those games, right? We are putting ourselves higher in the FIFA ranking. We're we're getting quality points, and so our aim this go around in Copa America should be to get out of that uh, first. For, that get out of that group. We gotta get out of that group, um, and so this is gonna involve a lot of strate strategizing on the part of of Coach Halgrimson because you know I mean. Those teams are ranked above us. They're technically better teams than us. Um, so it's not going to be a walk in the, the park to just expect to win. Um, we have luckily, I, I would say, played Mexico a few times before. I think Mexico is probably ranked the strongest team in this in, in the Copa America group. So we have played them quite a bit of times before um, with this coach. I think this coach has played them twice, maybe. Um, once in the in the um in the nations league when we play them in in the Azteca stadium stadium and also once in the uh in in the gold cup um and he drew one and lost one um one thinks well i i think that the 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 the, the nations league or the gold cup loss was you know you know not not the best you know not not, not the best game to lose because you know a game like that, we really should have been able to, you know, um, do better, you know. But the rankings, I think, you know, not, I, I don't understand it. Um, I think that uh, the, 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 there should be some change to it so that there is some some type of um, homogeneousness between the two. But I get, I get it that FIFA can see things one way and CONCACAF can see things another way. And that's why you might have the difference in the rankings because, you know, the two, the two doesn't really, um, they, they don't say the same thing. I remember I was having a conversation with someone at the, the game in, in, in Texas recently, the Nations League game in Texas, and he was asking me, I was saying to him that, like, the rankings are different between CONCACAF um, they have two different rankings, and he was saying, well, I mean, but isn't CONCACAF, like, um, pretty much based off FIFA? And I was like, not necessarily. No, at that time, it was pretty much the same. Whatever CONCACAF team, you know, um, CONCACAF had first and second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth, FIFA had it at that same ranking. But this current ranking that came out, there was some change. There were some changes. And so, you know, um, we don't we, we we'd love to see the difference or i would i would kind of almost like to see um what's the difference in how they 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 do the 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 rankings or, or whatsoever so that's that's a little bit about what i want to talk about out of the rankings i would love to hear your views but i see that not many people are in the chat as yet so i haven't i haven't maybe i will come back maybe i will come back to that topic um in a second but 
the second topic I wanted to, to, to discuss was if the USA is genuinely number one in CONCACAF. Is the United States genuinely number one in CONCACAF? So the reason why I, I this is this is something that is on my mind is because you know each person that you ask, if you ask anybody across the spectrum um, who listens, who watches Concacaf football, they will ask the question. Uh, if you ask them the question, which team is number one in the the, the, the in Concacaf? You know, everybody would say US. Now, again, as I just mentioned. The U.S. is ranked number one by Con by FIFA standards, but by CONCACAF standards, they're ranked number two. They have Mexico ranking number two. But most people, if you ask them, they will say it's the USA. Now, the reason why, 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 why that is the case is because, personally, I am not too sure that the USA is number one in CONCACAF. And I know that that's a controver controversial thing because most people in CONCACAF would believe that. But I don't believe that the U.S. is necessarily genuinely um number one in CONCACAF and the reason why I say that is because if you look at all of the 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 the, the, the tournaments and competitions that are held across CONCACAF um you will notice that there are three major tournaments there is the World Cup qualifying campaign which is home and away it has to be home and away I think that's a FIFA thing but there's also Nations League and there's also the Gold Cup. We know, for example, the Gold Cup every single year, uh, you know, it's whole, it's 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 held every two years, but every single year that the Gold Cup is held, it's 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 hosted in the United States. Now, I wanna say before I go any further that I am not anti-US at all, you know, and I actually kind of benefit from a lot of these tournaments being held in the U.S. because I can go and watch them easily because I live in the U.S. But I ju I'm just asking an objective footballing question. So, you know, I just want to make that clear. Not anti-U.S. football or anything like that. Just asking an objective footballing question. But as I was saying, most of the competitions that are held, except the World Cup qualifying campaign, meaning the Nations League final stage, and the Gold Cup, the entire Gold Cup tournament, is held in the United States. You know, we know for those of us who follow CONCACAF football that you, the U.S. plays well at home. You know, they, 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 when they play, they play well at home, but they don't play well away from home. They don't play well away from home, which makes them having to, the opportunity to play most of those competition games at home slight a slight advantage if you really think about it you know and there might be many things about behind that that there might be um financial reasons for that you know for example gold cup we know that there is a diaspora for most of the 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 the, the concacaf teams most of the concacaf teams have a diaspora in the united states and so it seemed like it might make more financial sense to stage these tournaments in the us because the gate receipts will be larger. But if you really kind of pin it down and analyze it a little bit, might not necessarily be so. No, I want to say, I, I, I want to pull, pull up some, some, some facts here recently um, that, 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 you know, it, it's from an article that was written in, in 2023. This is actually... Um, you know, an article that was written by, um, written on, it, it's called Chasing a Cup. You know, I, I think it's, it's written on this, on this, um, place, this website called chasingacup.com. And, and it's, it's pretty much talking about the, the U.S. and their, um, you know, their, their performance away from home when they play. You know, how do, does the U.S. perform away from home when they play? And um, I think it's kind of instructive because even U.S. fans kind of recognize th that there is a difference in the way that they play. And, you know, before before I get into the article, the reason I'm talking about it really is, is because when you check and you see the, um, the, 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 the fact that the Nations League, the final 
portion of the Nations League um, is is played in the US, the, the semifinals and the finals. But it's played at one stadium. It's played at one stadium. And for that, for, for those games at that one stadium, you can pay one ticket price and you get to watch both games. And 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 technically, you could do that at other stadiums in, in CONCACAF. You know, you could do that at other stadium in CONCACAF and get, garner the same amount of gate receipts. And so that is why I kind of wonder, you know, the, the article says away from the USA. And I'll, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read through it. I'll, I'll just kind of pick out the, the sections of it that I think are is relevant to the argument that I'm making. But it says away from the USA. The U.S. Men's national, the U.S. men's national team just wrapped up their 2023 campaign with yet another Greg Beral to road loss to Trinidad and Tobago in a critical match. But this time, the U.S. men's national team was able to qualify for the 2024 Copa America. Everyone, if you have been watching, you probably saw that um, game against um, Trinidad and Tobago that they lost um, down there in Port of Spain. Uh, for that that playoff home and away tie for the Copa America qualifying. That's the quarterfinals of the Nations League, actually. Um, it says, for decades, for decades, the philosophy of the U.S. men's national team when playing in FIFA competitive CONCACAF road matches was to play for the draw, which doesn't really provide the necessary mindset or, or winning culture for, for a nation that has more money and resources than most of the 41 teams of CONCACAF. I'm not suggesting that it's easy to play road matches in CONCACAF, there aren't a lot of challenges that the team encounters from the field conditions. Fans surrounding team buses on their way to the stadium and the passionate fans yelling and cheering against their team's opponent. It's rare for the U.S. men's national team to play road CONCACAF friendly matches. But here is a breakdown of those matches since the 1990 cycle. So they are looking at the road matches, the friendly. So we're going to look at the friendlies first. The friendlies that the United States have played on the road. And then we'll look at the World Cup qualifying campaign. So it says in 2022 cycle, they played two, they, they, they had two wins, 10 goals for, 10 goals against. They played on two neutral match friendlies played at, in, in Austria. I think actually one of those games was against Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken, you know, but those were played on neutral grounds. Then, um, in 2018 cycle, they had two wins again, two road matches against Cuba and Puerto Rico. I mean, games that they probably should have won. Um, 2014, two wins, one draw um, from three games. In the 2010 cycle, they didn't play. 20, 2006, they had one road win. And so, if you go down in the in the in the in the friendlies, they have won the away games. They have won a lot of away games based on the, the friendlies that they have won. Now, if you go to the World Cup qualifying campaign, it says U.S. men's national team managers CONCACAF road results. Below is a look at the road results for World Cup qualifying for the U.S. men's national team by cycle, with the 2002 and 2018 cycles being two of the most, the, two of the worst performance of the U.S. men's national team, with the 2006 and 2010 cycles being the only ones where the U.S. men's national team had the winning road record. However, both of those years, CONCACAF qualify only provide buys for top teams for the first round of qualifiers. And I think qualifiers is what they're trying to say. And saw the U.S. men's national team playing the second round and beat Grenada at home 3-0 and 3-2 on the road during the 2006 cycle. And also beat Barbados at home 8-0 and won 1-0 on the road in the 2010 cycle. However, so if you if you go through um, cycle by cycle, the U.S. men's national team, you'll notice in 2022, and I'm reading the article here. I, I can't bring it up on the screen, or maybe I can. I just don't know how to do it, you know. But maybe maybe in subsequent streams, you know, um, I will be able to. But it says um, in 2002, World Cup qualifying road results. And this was under Greg Beerhalter. They had one win, three draws, and three losses. So of the seven games that they played on the road, they had one win, three draws, and three losses. So that that was that's a relatively horrible um, you know, away record. In the 2018 
World Cup qualifying cycle, and this was under Jurgen Klinsmann and Bruce Arena. I think they ended up firing Bruce Arena um, during these qualifying. They had one win, four draws, and three losses. For two, it's a pretty much they, they got they got five points from all the away games um, that, that 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 they did, and then in the 2010 cycle, they did better: five wins, one draw, and three losses. So based on the 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 last eight years, you know, based on the last eight years of the U.S., you know, qualifying um, or doing the qualifying for for for, for World Cup, you'd have noticed that. Their, their their record is not the strongest, you know? And so it makes me wonder if CONCACAF had to move the, if CONCACAF was to spread the, 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 the tournaments around, so to speak, if CONCACAF was to have the Gold Cup in a different, you know, country, you know, every year, and, and that could be selective because like, you know, it had to. It has to be countries that can host the the, the 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 Gold Cup that can have the money. So that that has the money. So I'm guessing, you know, countries like 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 USA, Canada, and Mexico, those countries could host the Gold Cup. Or, you know, maybe the Gold Cup is hosted in the Caribbean, but it is hosted between three Caribbean nations or four Caribbean nations nations that can 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 manage to support. A tournament like this, or um, a combination of all of the above. I don't know, but it makes me wonder if the tournament was held in a different country, what would be the results? Because if we look at the 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 um, the, the, the the Gold Cup results, I think the U.S. is one of the the winningest um, teams. Uh, in in Concacaf, you know, I think I I, I think um, the U.S. is one of the, the the most winningest teams in Concacaf. Um, I, I think Mexico has won the most based on this, but the U.S. is 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 a is is a pretty close second. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The U.S. has won seven Gold Cups. And Mexico has won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the U.S. Have the, so Mexico has won nine. The U.S. have won seven. And you know, I don't, I don't even know if you can count that last Gold Cup that was when was that? Twenty twenty three, maybe, because you know the U.S. never brought their strongest team at all. You know, they they they, they brought a, a a pretty a pretty weak team, and you know Mexico ended up winning it. Um, at least they brought a pretty weak team by U.S. standards, and Mexico ended up winning it. But it makes me wonder if it is that 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 um, you know, um, the U.S. if Concacaf made those tournaments, no, if they made those tournaments in other parts of Concacaf, if the, the 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 winning would change because I'm qu quite frankly I'm tired of seeing a U.S. Mexico final in Nations League and in 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 Gold Cup. It would be nice to see another team making it to the final. And I think a way that that can happen is if sometimes the tournament is held somewhere else outside of the United States. And if you look at, for example, the Nations League, a tournament that the U.S. always brings their strongest team. We know that the U.S. is a strong team in CONCACAF, but they play well at home. So when you get to, like, the semifinal round, I wonder if they were to do the same thing in a place like maybe the Azteca Stadium in, 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 in Mexico or um, the BMO Field in, in, in Canada, if it wouldn't gin up the kind of the same support. Where, you know, at the AT&T at, at the, at the AT Field in Texas, what they did this time around was... They had, you know, both teams or both uh, games being played in one stadium. So if you paid the ticket to come and say Jamaica versus U.S., for example, you could still stay and watch Jamaica versus uh, and watch Panama versus Mexico. It's the same ticket, right? And 
also in the final, that's the thing. When we actually got to the final in the third place playoff, that's what they did. They had Jamaica versus um, Panama in game one. And then in game two, you saw US versus Mexico. It's the same ticket. Now, majority of the fans in that stadium were, um, were Mexican fans, right? Majority of the, 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 the fans in in the in, in the AT&T stadium was, were Mexican fans, which I get that, you know. But I I tend to believe that there is a difference between, you know, um, the the you know a lot of Mexican fans at a stadium in the United States and a lot of Mexican fans at a stadium in Mexico in the Azteca stadium. Those are two different things, you know. It's going to garner you two different results. You know, because it's just a different type of atmosphere, a different environment altogether. So it's going to bring you something different. And so it, it, it makes me wonder what would be what would be the harm in that happening in, 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 in CONCACAF doing that, where you have the, 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 the semifinals and finals of the Nation League being played in another country. I would like to see it just to see if the U.S. would do as well as they do when it's played at the, played in the US. And I'm not, you know, I'm not here to say that the US is definitely not number one. And again, not anti-US. I'm just trying to see what what it would be in a different country. What would the Gold Cup be like in a different country outside of the US? What would the Nations League semifinal and final and third place playoff be like in a different country? Would the US have the same type of dominance considering that they don't play well at home. Richard Green, bless up yourself, too, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. You know, you know they say <laughs> we're one or two is gathered. You know, so appreciate, it. appreciate, love, appreciate love the the support. You know, but as I was saying, you know, I I would I would have loved to see what it would be like. You know, what it would be like to 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 have the 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 um. The the the, 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 the Concacaf Nations League being played in a different country. I don't know. Do you think that US is genuinely number one in Concacaf, considering their away record? You know, um, you know. Do you think the US is genuinely number one? I know they have some of the best players in Concacaf, though. I have to, I have to admit that. But I just haven't had enough of an opportunity to see them in tournaments away from the US when it comes down to Concacaf. And it just makes me wonder if their, you know, their their form, you know, in terms of winning competitions would be the same, you know, if they were to play at home or to play away from home, you know. So, you know, it's just 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 something that I've 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 actually you know been pondering on. I wanted to hear um, people's opinion on it because I know it's probably. I know it's probably a, a, a thing that that people, you know, um, really think about. Richard Green, love the channel. Always tune in. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Bless up yourself. Bless up yourself, man. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I guess we're gonna make this one a short one because you know we don't have the the type of engagement that um I was hoping to have this on this one. But finally, though, um, my final topic I'll talk about is. Um, yeah, a busy summer for the reggae boys coming up, you know. What I mean, a really busy summer coming up. I myself is looking forward to it because you know, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a nice summer of football. And you know, there's this article that I, I found that, um, you know, uh, it talks about Ricketts, Michael Ricketts, and you know, the busy summer. That 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 is coming up, you know. Michael Ricketts must be must be feeling good right now because you know he he um won the JFF election. The reggae boys is doing good. Football is looking up in 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 um in Jamaica in general, and you know yeah. After after congratulate the, the the JFF a little bit though, you know. Richard Green is say. You think that the U.S. is number one, but you think the gap is closing fast? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again, yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even disagree with that, you know. I wouldn't even disagree with the U.S. being number one. But I would love to see if 
Jamie, if the tournament could be held outside of the U.S., you know, and I, I, as I was saying earlier, I understand the reasons for it, though. I understand that, you know, there are financial reasons behind it. It must, it, it could be because of, of, of the money situation. You can get more gate receipts, you know, if it's held in the U.S. than if it's held anywhere else in CONCACAF. But I would love to see it being held somewhere else. I'd love to see the Nations League, that 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 last part, that semi-final and final, I would like to see it be held like at the BMO field, or at the, the 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 Azteca Stadium in Mexico, or or somewhere else, just to see what the the, the because you always have a U.S. Mexico final, um for for the last I think three Nation League finals, you know, and the U.S. has three repeated no one two three. Personally, I'm tired of seeing the U.S.A. Mexico final. I want to see something else, and I honestly believe that. One of the reasons why we see so many USA Mexico finals for either Gold Cup or Nations League is because it's held in the US, you know. That, but that's just my 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 take on it. Um, but yeah, US US has to be call number one no because that's just in terms of if you're just looking at the the the, the, the statistics, they are they definitely are number one. It's uh, it's up to the other federations to put the proper infrastructure. True, true. So you, you don't think, um, and I agree with that to an extent. I agree with that. You don't think, um, you you don't think Canada or Mexico could host it, though, especially given the the, the, the method that, um, you know that that uh, USA has used, where they put it in one stadium, and 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 people just come and and, and it's pretty much if you if you really think about it, you know. Even this time around, it's really the Mexican fans that that filled out the stadium. So if if we were to have the the, 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 the that portion of the the um the, the Nations League in Azteca Stadium, I don't think you would lose anything. You know, as a matter of fact, in some ways, I think Jamaica would even if provided Jamaica made it to that round, Jamaica probably would have some support from the Mexicans because I I, I kid you not when we were over there in Texas, um, the Mexican fans wanted Jamaica to win against the United States. They were saying that. They were like hoping. No, one could say maybe they want Jamaica to win so that, you know, they could have us to play in the final, you know, and maybe they think they would have stand a better chance beating us than beating the U.S. Maybe that's the reason, but I still think that would get a lot of support from the Mexican fans. Um you know, if it was held in, in the U.S. or held in Mexico. But, yeah, you're right, though. I mean, I think infrastructure-wise, the 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 um the, the other region, the other countries in CONCACAF needs to do better. I think, you know, Costa Rica has good facilities. Um, I think Mexico has good facilities. I think um, Canada has good facilities. Um, but if you're talking about any one outside of those countries... I think you'd have to host a host it jointly, you know. If you look at like cricket World Cup, you know, um, cricket World Cup was held in, in 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 the Caribbean and it was spread out among several different countries across the Caribbean. I don't know cricket is different from 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 football, but it would be interesting. It would be interesting. I would love to see it held outside the US one time. You know, I would I would love to see it held. Hill outside the US one time and see and see what the 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 conclusion of the tournament who would end up in the final and who would ultimately win that final it would be I think that would be interesting because currently I think if it continues to be held in the US if the USA brings their A team to the Gold Cup they're going to win it if the USA brings their A team to the 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 Nations League they're going to win it so long as it's held in the US but I believe that if it's held in Mexico, if it's held in Canada, maybe Canada to a lesser extent, but still, if it's held in Canada, if it's held in Mexico, if it's held in Costa Rica, if it's spread out across the Caribbean, I am not so sure the U.S. would have the type of dominance that they do have right now. That's that that's 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 my opinion on that. I don't I I'm not so sure they would have the the, the type of dominance that they have right now, but. 
Just my opinion. Oh, really? It's there till 2027? Richard, like, what is there till 2027? What is there till 2027? Is that the Nation League or the, the Gold Cup? Is... Oh, I, and I think they're going to... Yeah, I, I can understand them keeping it over there. I know all the... the, the, the um Because of the World Cup, the World Cup happening in 2026, they're probably going to keep it there, keep all of, all of these tournaments there. But we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. <clears throat> But yes, as I was saying, um, just my, my 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 final article, and I'm probably it's the Nations League. Nations League will be there till 2027. Um, wow, well, that's that's <laughs> that's a little bit of a shame because I can understand the Gold Cup because it's a tournament and they probably want to use the Gold Cup to practice for the World Cup in the way that they're using Copa America to practice for the World Cup. So I understand that. But the Nations League, hmm. I don't know. I think it would be nice to see it outside the US just to see what happens. You know, if 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 things the dominance of the US would be the same. But I mean, I guess if it's already contracted to be to through 2027, then it's, it, it just is what it is. But I'm gonna read my 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 final article. Um, as it says, busy boy, busy, busy summer for reggae boys, and that's relating to the the World Cup qualifying that is coming up. Um the Copa America that's also coming up and you know the World Cup the, the, the Nations League I, I think that will come maybe after the the, the, the the Copa America. So there's a lot of football to be played um not even taking into consideration the the um the the uh they call it the 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 under 20 the under 18s and the under 20 that you know, I would say Jamaica having an under 18 team now. We say they're going to have an under 23 team in addition to the under 15, the under 17, and the under 20. So that's now, if you think about it, um, under 15, and I'm not sure if there's under 13 too, I don't remember, but under 15, under 17, under 18 now, under 20, and under 23, in addition to the senior reggae boys, that's six teams. Just for just for men's football alone, and I'm wondering if they're going to go in the same direction when it goes on to women's football, um, with under 15, under 17, under 20, sorry, 15, 17, 18, 20, and 23. It would be interesting to see. Um, but that's good development for 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 Jamaica. But in terms of the the summer, I'm going to just read this article. This this article was posted in the Gleaner. Um, actually today, April 5, 2024, and, and it says, busy summer for boys. The article says, following Jamaica's historic third place finish at the recent CONCACAF Nations League, Jamaica Football Federation President Michael Ricketts is looking forward to a busy summer for the reggae boys. In a press release from the JFF yesterday, Ricketts congratulated the boys on their achievement at the Nations League. Jamaica placed third in the regional competition following a 1-0 victory over Panama, courtesy of a goal from defender Dexter Lembekisa. Throughout the campaign, the players had set various historic landmarks for the senior men's team, including a first-time podium placement in the Nations League, as well as Jamaica's first ever victory over Canada on Canadian soil after a 3-2, after a 3-2 quarterfinals comeback in Toronto. Yes, that was that very epic comeback. During the campaign, Jamaica also secured an automatic spot in the 2024 Copa America by virtue of their semifinals appearance in the Nations League. With this historic run, the Reggae Boys have moved up to fifth in CONCACAF rankings index, passing Costa Rica, as well as moving up two places in the global FIFA rankings to now 55th overall. So yes, you heard me talking about that earlier where, you know, Jamaica is 55th, which puts them at sixth in CONCACAF by the FIFA rankings, but in CONCACAF index, they are fifth, which puts them one above um, Costa Rica, who is actually ranked 52 in the, the CONCACAF, in the in the FIFA rankings. Ricketts praised the team's achievement and is anticipating further rankings progression in the summer. And I, I'm guessing that's based on how they perform in the Copa America. We're certainly pleased to see our national team move up, up in the CONCACAF and FIFA rankings, respectively, he said. For the first time in our history, we landed on the podium in the CONCACAF Nations League 
and know we eagerly anticipate the busy summer that lies ahead. Again, we are proud of the reggae boys and we look forward to them continuing to move up in the rankings. The boys' next assignment will be the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifiers in June. Jamaica has been drawn in Group E alongside Guatemala, Dam Republic, Dominica, and the British Virgin Islands. Jamaica will face Dominican Republic on June 6th before their second fixture against Dominica on June 9th. Those are fixtures we're probably expecting to win. I'm just going to finish out the article. It says, following this, the boys will start their campaign in the Copa America, having been drawn in Group B with Ecuador, Mexico, and Venezuela. The Copa America also starts in June with Jamaica facing Mexico in their first match on June 22. The boys will then face Ecuador on June 26 before closing the group stages against Venezuela on June 30. This will mark Jamaica's third appearance at the Copa America, having been previously invited in 2015 and 2016. And I think that that ends the article. So that's, you know, a, a, a big summer coming up for, 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 for the reggae boys. Um, <laughs> say right now, you think Jamaica base level can beat USA base level? Yeah, I mean, would I love to see that? That is what I was kind of hoping for, you know. Um, when they get the, the Nations League, but you know, with the whole Leon Bailey situation, plus, you know, what I mean, we have injuries left, right, and center, whether it was Ethan Pinnock or, or um, you know, um, Amari Bell. And the absence of the Mary Grant, Shamar Nicholson, that never did happen. But hopefully, hopefully we'll we will we will we will have an opportunity for that to happen soon, sooner rather than later. But um, yeah. So 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 Michael Ricketts must be feeling pretty good right now, if you really think about it, because I mean he has he has you know piloted piloted the the the, the Jamaica's program to a to a decent position right now. You know what I mean? I think a lot of the noise has died down surrounding the JFF because of the performance of the reggae boys. Um, they give a stellar performance in the Nations League. Um, we saw how, you know, they, they played a really good game, you know, against the USA. They ended up not winning that game, but, you know, they put in a really good performance as was really seconds away from making it to the finals and knocking out the USA. Um, and we, 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 we saw some progress. We saw some improvement. We can genuinely say Jamaica has improved as a national, as a, as a, as a squad. I, we can genuinely say that, that they have improved as a squad, you know, um, we can genuinely say, you know, how Grimson, you know, has proven himself as a quality coach um, so far. You know, when he came into the job, everybody was kind of lauding him and saying how good he was going to be, you know, for, for the national team. And I kind of reserved my judgment on him. I wasn't really joining the chorus of people who was singing his praises because, you know, even though he did well with Iceland in bringing them to the Euros and I think even qualifying them for the World Cup, you know, I wanted to to see how he would do here, you know, um, because, you know, CONCACAF is a different region and, you know, Jamaica is a different, is a different nation, is a different national team. So, you know, it's, 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 it's going to really, you know, require a different skill set to get us to the type of glory that, you know, um, we, 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 he probably achieved with Iceland and the type of glory that we wanted. Um, to achieve. So I wanted to reserve my judgment, but his, um, his, you know, his, his um, work has been good. You know, uh, he has done well with the national team. You know, we see improvement right now. I'm not even really worried about if we, we, we don't have all the players that we need are, are all of our best players, because I think this, this coach is a strategist. You know, so even if, you know, we don't have all of our best available players, he will come up with a strategy um, to, 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 to come up, to, to, to beat the teams that are in front of us. Figo, Figo, big up yourself and thank you for being here, man. Really appreciate it. So looking forward for Nations League 24-25 in September. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that that actually starts that actually starts in um is it November that that, that new set of games starts um for Jamaica? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because of the performances that we have seen in this Nations League, especially with this coach, I think you know he's a strategist and you know I'm looking forward to the type of players that he will add to the team. I don't know if there are any players in the wings um waiting to be added to the squad um for the Copa America. You know, I hear people talking about um you know I hear people talking about Mason Greenwood. Man, that would be a dream <laughs> if 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 Mason Greenwood could come and play for Jamaica. That would be a dream situation. Figo Figo say I hope Jamaica accustomed to the national stadium at home. Yeah, very important, you know, because, you know, we don't play well at home. We, we tend to actually, in, in recent times, we tend to actually play better <coughs> away from home than we play at home. And I don't know if that have, if, if, if the reason for that is what is the surface. Can we hear people talking about the, the, the quality of the surface? Or is it that the fans them just don't come out and, 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 and support the team? I don't know why, you know, but we played, we tend to play better away from home than we play at home. Um, September, October, November is Nations League. Yes. So it will be interesting to see how we, we approach, what our approach will be. It will be interesting to see if we get any, any, any new players. You know what I mean? We hear people talking about the Mesa Greenwoods, the Reese Nelson. Those, 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 you know, names have been in the wings for a long time, but we don't see. We don't hear anything. But can you imagine if Miss Greenwood was to come and play for Jamaica? Do you think that that would make more people come out to the national stadium and watch the games? Because it's 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 sad right now. You know? Yeah. So we hardly yeah, we hardly play we hardly play any game at home. Um, but you know. With with, the, with with Nations League and, and the World Cup qualifying, um, we should play more games at home. But you're right. The only games in terms of friendlies that we play at home is when when the coach using um, the, 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 you know what I mean, the, the, the second string team or the local base players um, to play Trinidad and those teams at home. We don't see any major teams coming to Jamaica to play in the national stadium and that that's that is a sad thing you know it would be nice if we can see more top-notch games in terms of friendlies being played in the national stadium i don't know what the jff needs to do to market the games better to have people to come out to the stadium but it's 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 not good at all it's not good because i remember even the game against canada which is technically a big game. I mean, not technically, it is a big game. You had Mikel Antonio, Liam Bailey, Damian Lowe, you know what I mean? All of the stars on our team, plus you have on Canada, you know, Alphonse Davis, Jonathan David, you know, Kyle Lauren, you know, Estaquia, all of those players coming, but yet you don't really see anybody coming out to the stadium to watch it. And I don't know if there is a... a, a, a you know, if there is just a problem with us, is it, we can't say that Jamaicans don't like football because back in the '98 campaign, stadium used to ram. So what is it? What is causing the the the, 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 the dearth of attendance in the national stadium in Jamaica when we have games at home? It's you know, I want to really see the days when Jamaica have. Jamaica, the, the national stadium as the office again you know i would really love to see that so we need friendlies before june qualifying it would be nice it would be nice if we get some friendlies but it seemed like every time we get a friendly <clears throat> it's outside of jamaica even the last gold cup tournament we we had two friendlies before the gold cup and they were in in europe the, the game against jordan and the game against qatar um, was in Europe. Then the last, you know, the last major, um, uh, the last major friendly was against Guatemala in 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 the US, you know, and you know I know we had a friendly against Trinidad, two friendlies in Trinidad against Trinidad in Trinidad in in Jamaica, but you know those 
those never bring, bring out anybody to the stadium. Those never bring out anybody to the stadium. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why that is. You think it's because of the cost of the ticket? Why you, you, you think the ticket is is too is too costly? Is is it too much? Too much money? Or or or, or what? Because the ticket price, my can imagine says more than fifteen hundred dollars for a ticket. And as a matter of fact, the game against Canada, the game against Canada in the national stadium, wasn't that free? Wasn't that game free? Because I know it 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 was like raining on that Friday night, so they had to postpone it and put it to 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 um to Saturday morning. And I think the word got out that the game was free and the, the, the stadium was still relatively empty. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what 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 that was about, but we need to do something about that because it's 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 crazy the the the, the um the the, the 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 attendance to 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 Jamaica's games and the national stadium is 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 poor. We need to do a much better job of that, and you know, hopefully by the time that it comes around, we we can um we 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 can we we can do something about that. We can have more people attending the games because you know. If we are playing, if we're playing, if Jamaica is playing so well away from home, no. Can you imagine if we're able to play well at home? How, how powerful we would be. You know, and maybe the reason why we play so well at home away from home is because, you know, it, it, it's maybe because um the 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 we have to we play so so much of our games away from home that we just have to, you know adapt to be to, to playing away from home. Richard Green said, I think the rain did it. Yeah. The rain the rain caused the the the, the Friday night game to be rained out. And then I it came on Saturday and the tickets were free. Ah, well I don't know if the ticket was free, but the entry to the stadium was free. And people hardly turned up for it. You know? So I don't know if there's anybody here who can give a what what are your thoughts on what's the reasoning behind the poor attendance? What do you think is the the, the reason for the poor attendance um to Jamaica's games? Because it it it's it doesn't look good right now. It doesn't look good, and I don't see anything that indicates that that is going to change. This is back in the nineties. The games play two p.m. in sun heat. We never depend night matches for full stadium. Well, um, so you think is the, you think the time of day has has a bit to do with it in terms of the attendance? Um, yeah, I mean the, the, we had a lot more people in the stadium at that time, but we arguably now have a, 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 a have much better players. We have a lot of good players um, in in the in the in the team right now. We have a lot of bigger crowd pullers. I mean, you have Mikel Antonio. You know, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, um, West Ham, big Premier League striker. You have Liam Bailey, who, even though he's not in the team right now, but in the past, you know, Liam Bailey, you have Amari Bell, you have Demari Gray, you have Ethan Pinnock, you know. And even, you know, I mean, Damian Lowe and, 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 and Andre Blake are, are, are crowd pullers too, I would think. You know, so I don't know what 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 it is, what's causing that, but it would love to, I would love to see um, that improve, and for us to have a better presence inside our national stadium and ultimately, you know, um, at home, you know, when we when we, when we play our games. People take people are take day from work. Yeah, okay. That's what you're saying now. That's what you're saying now. Yeah, people was people people is a lot more serious. People was a lot more serious about it at the time. So you know, people they just love the football. They just love to come out and 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 um and support the national team at that time. And I don't know what's what's causing you know it. No, you know I don't know if it's the JFF fault. You know, I don't know if it's 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 poor marketing, but I remember, for example, when 
when I was living in Jamaica, you know, one of the things Harborview used to do, because I used to live in Harborview, they used to drive around the community and, and you know, they, they, they used to talk over this megaphone. They would just drive on the, the, in a car and talk over this megaphone and say, come out and watch the, at the Harborview Mini Stadium, you know, Harborview versus Tivoli Garden, Sunday, April 5 at 7 p.m. Bring your kids, blah, 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 you know, and they were just driving around the community and they were blurting out, you know, come out and watch Harborview, you know, and, you know, by 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 though in in those days like we how of you used to get decent support it wasn't always a full how of you mini stadium but it used to get decent support you know and even by the standards in those days people were saying boy we can do better more people can come out because it's a peaceful community and not not going on and you know all they have to do is just walk up to the stadium and all of that um so, you know, even by those days standards, that was seen as low attendance, but it was better than than you know than nothing at all. You know, the the, the, the national stadium essentially just have a few people in 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 the grandstand and maybe a sprinkling of people in the bleachers. No, but but when you go KC versus JC Manning Cup game, when you go champs, when you go you know, CC versus, you know, KC, um, maybe maybe that's at the Super League or the Olivia Sheila, whatever it is, the stadium ram. You know what I mean? So I'm going to understand what causes it, you know. But we definitely need to do a better job. Definitely. Anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end this stream here. Um, I know I was I was hoping to get a little bit more engagement this time around, but like I did the last time, but you know, such is life. I mean, um, we keep it pushing, and hopefully next time we will have more people on. But until next time, everybody, take care of yourself, walk good. I'm out. <laughs>